right, everyone, uh, we just finished our in-camera session. And uh, before we move on with presentations, uh, I'm going to be the bearer of sad news. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, Canada's monarch, had passed this afternoon. Uh, she died in Belmora, or Belmora residence in Scotland. And she was uh, surrounded by her friends and family. Uh, so I'm going to ask everyone that we have uh, 30 seconds of silence uh, for, for our dearly departed queen. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I am going to ask uh, Madam CEO, is our flags all at half mast as per our flag policy? Yep, they're, they're down. Yes. Yep. Okay, if not, they will be. Thank you very much. Uh, this just happened recently, so my condolences to the royal family. Item number seven, presentations. We have with us here Lori McClee or McClay. Uh, could you come on down and uh, there's a red button on the microphone. You don't have to have it directly in your face. Uh, just push the red button and then I'll turn it on. I just, just hold on. We'll, we'll, we got one right here. We got a spare one. Councillor Daniel Allen is uh, absent with regrets. So, you can all take a seat, your microphone's on, and you may start at your pleasure. Good afternoon. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank all of you for inviting us here today. Uh, my name is Natalia Tate. I am a school counselor at Meadowfields. And with me today, I have Laurie McClay, who is um, a phys ed teacher, as well as Aslan Ettinger, who is our other phys ed teacher. Um, you might be wondering why a school counselor and two phys ed teachers are spearheading a playground project. Um, this fell under our HPS uh, mandate last year. We were looking at student engagement and getting students involved in making some decisions around our school um, and came to realize quite quickly that our playground was in dire need of some assistance. Do you want to, you, can you click please? Which buttons? <laughs> There, there it we goes. go. Um, so the current situation at our school, um, the playground structures were installed in 1999 when our school was built. So they are 23 years old. Um, when we went out and started looking at what we had in our playground last year, and this is on our three to five side, we do have two playgrounds, one for primary to two and one for grade three to five. Um, the majority of the structures on the three to five side were bent. Um, very badly eroded. Um, there were pieces of metal that were falling off um, and parts were being were chained off by our maintenance department because they simply were not safe for our students to be on. Um, so the safety standards were definitely no longer being met uh, for students to utilize the equipment that we had. Um, chains locked around the equipment to keep people away from them so students could not climb or access various pieces. Um, so there were entire areas uh, and huge sections that were not accessible whatsoever to our kids. Um, so over the course of last year, we reached out to Nick Herbert Excavating, who made an in-kind donation and came in over the summer when our students were not there and removed all of the structures that we had except for a bank of swings. So this would have been March last year. Um, so this is a piece that multiple pieces connect and over the years there had been certain pieces that were removed um, when they were deemed unsafe at that point but then in August uh oh you went one too far no oh okay so March 
and then we, uh, there, any, everything was removed by the end of summer and there is literally pea gravel um, and, four swings. and four swings and a wide open area where there is no equipment currently. Okay, I'll slide. No, nope. oh, okay. <laughs> Switch. So uh, we decided as a staff and a group with our HPS committee that we were going to go directly to our students, uh, our student council that we had formed, which was grades three to five. And when we told them that our playground was in ill repair and we were going to lose it, uh, we needed to have their ideas and their thoughts on this because of course they were the people who were going to be using it on a regular basis. And they helped us by creating a video that we have shared uh, on social media and that parents have seen and that we've shown in the school and of course to you folks as well just to talk about how bad things were and the things that we need to make it better. It was a windy day so I apologize for the noise. We can, yeah. Thank you. The only thing after that is 
how to make a donation. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's on the brochure that I gave you. Um, you have to get out of that to click. Maybe. So this, this is what our playground currently looks like. So as you can see, everything is gone. All we have left is the pea gravel, the one bank of four swings, and we still have uh, the wooden barrier around the outside. So in terms of our student engagement, as I mentioned earlier, we went to our student council as a part of our Health Promoting Schools project, our grades three to five. And what we did with them was we started with this group and we brainstormed ideas for their dream playground. And they knew right up front that just because it was something they really liked didn't necessarily mean that it would be something that we could provide for them. And once they had their set of ideas, we also asked them to go back to their classrooms to further engage our student community to see if there were any other ideas that were left out or if there were things that they were all in agreement that they would really like to see. So these were some of the things that came up. Obviously, not all of them were things that we could do for them, like a ball pit or you know, a roundabout, which I don't think we're allowed to have anymore, things like gymnastics centers and a zip line. But there are things on the list that we could provide for them given the opportunity. So this was our kind of mock-up of ideally what we would have our playground look like going forward. So if you look, we have more of a park kind of feel in terms of what we're going for. So we would like to see you know, lots of natural things happening, having some trees planted and picnic benches, places where families can sit while their child is playing, whether they're outside with a teacher or if they're going after school, because as we know, the playground at Meadowfields often gets used for a variety of things outside of school hours. Uh, we also thought it would be a great idea to have kind of a walking path created around the outside of the playground um, and also to have a paved entrance that would run from where the pave currently is in the parking lot to allow access through to make it more accessible to someone who would be in a wheelchair or someone who would be using you know, assistive tech to move around because right now with the pea gravel, that isn't ideal and I'm sure we're all aware at this point that by 2030, the government is asking for all playgrounds in the province to be fully accessible and inclusive. So we want to do everything we can up front to get as much of that done right away so that we don't have to change it in the years to come. Yes, of course. Also just, you're, you're good, you slip back. We, we currently have a gazebo built at the school that we're starting to use this year as an outdoor classroom, but we would also like to see a more natural environment on the back corner there with kind of some logs or stumps for seating that we can get kids out in nature to do some of their classwork as well. Right. So I think we're good. Yep. Um, so now we need funding. <laughs> so we have a variety of school fundraisers that we've already been working on um, through last school year. And uh, this weekend, we have a couple of more coming up, yard sales, and we're doing a canteen at a baseball tournament and things like that. We have a silent auction coming up at the end of, or sorry, middle of October now. So we have a variety of things happening at the school to help us out. Um, I am always applying for grants and uh, in-kind donations are welcome. Individuals and families are making donations. Local businesses we've been reaching out to asking for help. Um, and then at the bottom, I mentioned donor levels because um, we are talking about creating a, um, a sign at the playground showing who all of our bestie, friend, buddy, and pal donor levels depending on the, the amount of money donated. Um, do I do this? Okay. And so we have a copy of the, bu the current budget where we are. We're going to show it on the screen, but it's really quite small. Um, the budget, of course, is, is ever-changing. Uh, we'll be adding to that after this weekend's fundraisers. Maybe we can bring that up. So one side we have the revenue, the other side we have the expenses. So school fundraising so far, 4,793 community donations. We're at uh, 5,650 in kind from Nick Hurlibert, 5,000 to remove the playground. Uh, I do have some grants mentioned there that I have applied for and I haven't heard back from. Walmart has donated $1,000 and I have other grants to add on soon that are due at the end of the month. 
um, the total is on the back, but of course some of those grants have not been approved, so the amount is not completely accurate. Expenses, some of these are accurate according to um, quotes that we have been given. We searched out three quotes for um, site preparation and play structures. So those quotes are accurate. Um, other ones are estimates, but when looking at that, I think, I don't think we've gone over by much as far as estimated, and, but we are saving on the removal with the in-kind donation. So that takes us to 338, 708. So we have a long way to go. <laughs> Um, does anybody have any questions on the budget? Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Councillor Lauren Cushing, you have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you for your presentation, number one. Uh, it definitely is a, a very important project that you guys are undertaking, and, and I, 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 for one, will be supporting whatever the municipality can do. Um, I see that you have another a number of people that you, uh, or a number of people or organizations that you have approached. Have you ever thought about pre approaching the 100 men, 100 women in the Yarmouth uh, Betterment? That was mentioned to me just last week, actually, when we returned to school, and I, um, the individual that mentioned it, I said, can you get me a contact? I'm not sure who, who their contact is. Who do I approach to mm -hmm. try to get on the list? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we have somebody at a council table that can provide that information okay. to you. The other one that I've been asked to, why don't you approach so-and-so, is the uh, the firefighters. They're, oh, they're 50-50. They're 50-50, and yeah. I said, I don't know how to get on the list. <laughs> well. So I suppose if I called the fire department, maybe somebody there would know, but with the 100 men, I, I, I really don't know. Okay. So. Probably. Yeah, that, that was all great ideas. Now, on your Who's expense, it? on your expense side, uh, your site preparation is 68,000. That's, uh, that's mm -hmm. a huge amount. And that, those, those, where'd that come from? Those came in on three different quotes. So that was, that was one of the numbers. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, wow. see, when we were talking site preparation, um, we're talking about the walking track being, you know, sketched out, um, removing, um, the or clearing, road. Clearing more space, like oh, to the rock space. wall. We have rock walls. Oh that we're yeah. Clear yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to create a, a larger uh, park area as well. Mm. I know um, the three companies that came in and gave us quotes were concerned. Uh, the way that the playground, if you're not familiar with the site, we have a soccer field that's raised, and everything runs down to where the playground currently is. <laughs> yeah. So right now it's pea gravel. Well designed. So it kind of is hidden. The, the rain gets absorbed by the pea yeah. gravel and is kind of camouflaged. But I think the concern that everyone had, I know the three that we spoke to, drainage. once that pea gravel is gone, we need to do something to make this so it drains. Proper drainage. So drainage, yes. drainage and, and various things to make it so yeah. it doesn't turn into muck. So yeah. are you speaking about getting rid of the rock wall? No, just clearing no. to the rock wall. Rock the clearing to the rock. To go. Darn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't like the rock walls? No, no I... He wants a rock wall. I want the rock wall. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the rocks from there. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. No, so that's... Uh, it's a great undertaking that you, you, you started. And uh, I must say, uh, years ago, I was involved with, with playgrounds, and the cost of the playgrounds have certainly escalated yes. over the last 40 years. Yes. And it even goes higher than this um, when we add accessible pieces. That's very important, yeah. Yes. You no, know, it's great, because yeah. Sherry and I sat on the accessibility yes. committee. Yes. So if we can be of some help there, probably, Sherry, too encourage that would be much appreciated so. yes thank you yeah good thank you very much keep up the good work thank, thank you. you councillor patty durkee you have the floor thank you mr chair and thanks teachers you're awesome <laughs> thank, thank you, you. <laughs> you're welcome i know you've had a couple of really tough years so i appreciate everything that you do um first of all who paid for the original playground that was there like the the, the province pay yeah. for that when it was when it was first built so and why don't they contribute now so what I've been told and maybe Councillor Cunningham oh. can help with that <laughs> um, I believe what I've been told is when a school is built they will set everything up 
okay, and then you open up your school, but when it comes time for repairs or replacements, nice. it's up to the school. So, and our school was a P3 school up until how many years three, ago? Three years ago. Maybe Just three years COVID, ago right? too. And so that was, uh, that would have fallen back on the province at that time it had we stayed P3, but now where we are owned by Tri-County, it does fall back on to each individual school. So it's not just Meadowfields that has to build their own. I'm sure you've heard from other schools maybe trying to do something similar. It, it's, a, it's a costly venture and it does fall on each individual school. I don't understand, but. <laughs> Neither um, do I. Neither do we. <laughs> and, and just to confirm, did you say it can be used outside of school times? Will it be accessible oh, yes. at any time absolutely. of day? Absolutely, yes, okay. absolutely. Um, and uh, can people still make donations for your yard sale? Yes. yes. And so where? <laughs> um, drop offs for the yard sale can happen anytime when the school is open. Uh, we have a doorbell. Schools are locked now, so we have a doorbell, and somebody will come and let you in. And we're storing everything in the library for now, and and the lobby. Yeah, it's overflowed. And if school times don't work for you, then Saturday morning would be lovely. And that's when the that's yard when it is happening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to do it in the bus loop in the front of the school. We'll put everything out there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, and Thank good you. luck with this project. Thank you. Councillor. Councillor Nick Hilton, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the presentation. So just a, a couple questions, and uh, I actually forwarded you the contact for 100 men already. Great, so, thank uh, you. Um, and I think the way it works, though, is you need to be nominated by one of those 100 men. So uh, I'm new to that. I'll gladly put in the first nomination for oh, you. Oh, great, thank, thank you. you. Um, but I do have a question how that works. Are you a non-for-profit? Non Are you going after a number? We are non for profit, um, and we do have a number through the school board. Okay, that that makes things much easier. Yes. Um, I mean, you just watched a group in the community create the splash park in much yes. the same way as you're looking to do that. And Linda is on your committee as Linda well. Is always. Yeah. Um, we grabbed so, her up real quick. <laughs> yeah. So she's a former she, principal at our school yeah. too. She's a wonderful and asset. So, yes. um, you know, look forward to maybe getting some of those community members or committee members involved in your project as well. Yes. Um, the outdoor classroom, um, <coughs> is there any mon money through the province to create those? I feel like there is. There, well, it comes through grants. Yeah. And so I'm constantly applying and there are some uh, TD, my last one that I applied for, TD Friends of the Environment, that was one of those. Um, if it's natural and we're using it properly and, and so on and so forth, then yes, that money there could be put towards that. But there's other ones, um, I can't for the life of me think of the names right now. There's one through Green Schools or something yes. like that. There's a couple that are specific to, to outdoor educational areas yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, those grants are really important to get to the number yes. that you're trying to reach. Yes. Linda will tell you that. Um, well, I look forward to seeing how far we can go and how quick we can go there. So, thank you. Um, we'll probably have this conversation at the table another another day as well. Right. Thank Thanks. you. Deputy Warden Trevor Cunningham. Right. Th thank you for the presentation. Awesome project, obviously. Thank you. Um, we were able to my. My uh, wife who works at uh, Metal Fields, which you're very familiar with, Leslie, she, <laughs> she had me carrying things into the yard sale on Saturday, so I, I, I'm quite aware of it. And, and there was a lot of stuff starting yes. to congregate. So uh, just on the 100 guys uh, who share Yarmouth County, so how it works generally is you, you need to have, in the list of, of guys that are members are, are on the website, so you need to ha you need to contact those folks, and uh, I like Nick would be a, a, a sponsor to, to nominate. And each each quarter, uh, I don't know when the next meeting is coming up, but probably pretty soon, I think, because it's been some time since the last meeting. Uh, each quarter, four times a year, it's the three projects which have the, the greatest number of nominations. They're able to present. Okay. So. That, that's how okay. it works. And then there's a, like a, a five, 10 minute presentation that, that, that you give and then there's a vote at the meeting. And uh, I think the, the, the numbers around, 
um, 120, 125 at this point, so it's about $12,000. So nice. the winning pro and, and you can reapply over and over again, provided okay. you have the, nice. um, yeah, the requisite number of, uh, of nominations. So which, okay. which is the top three. Okay. So in the top one of those is uh, gets the gets the uh, okay. gets the gets the money. Ha having said that, fully supportive of the project and. Uh, it's a great thing and obviously needed for the community. I mean, there are, I think, probably about, I'm guess, guessing about 500 students there now. Right now we're at 440. 440, yeah. 440. So, so that's a lot of kids um, from, from the municipality in, in town as well. So, yes. yeah. Is that so, including our pre-primary? Including our pre-primary. Without pre-primary, right. I think we're 392. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so lots of need there, so. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Used, it's used every day. Um, Plus, after school, we have an after school program. So we have students there until 5.30 in the evening. Mm -hmm. And in the summers, um, the Yarmouth Recreation Day Camp is there mm -hmm. using our space. And I know when people use the soccer fields, their children come down and, and random families show up. Sometimes they show up during school hours and I'm like, well, we're kind of busy right now. But, you know, and so it's, it's a busy spot. And it's central, so. I, I was there several times when my kids were younger, so. All, all times of, of uh, yes. day and night. So, and, and, and even thank you very much for Love all it. your efforts on this file, and uh, we're we're going to get there for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Sherry Hurlbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the presentation. Very much appreciated. Um, I'll piggyback on the hundred men who care. We, I am part of the hundred women who care, but we don't have a hundred and. We don't have 100 women, so shameless, <laughs> shameless plug. If anybody wants to join 100 women, they could. But it's the same same process. Um, you have to be nonprofit. You have to get your name on the list to be nominated. We nominate. We pick who we want to nominate, and then the three people. We just had our meeting last, um, actually, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, it was just this past Tuesday. Um, so that I can actually send you the contact information for Perfect. that. Um, and. I see it's up here on the screen, but I can also email this Meadowfields one that Absolutely. I have. Okay, perfect. Yes. I'll do that. So that aside, a couple of questions that I that have probably been answered by other counselors who asked. It was a P3 school, no longer a P3 school. Right. So, and you may not be able to answer this. I'm not sure. So we know that the built, the equipment should have been repaired, could have been repaired. Do we know why it was never repaired and it got to the point where it had to be taken away? Well, and if you can't answer, that's fine. I understand. There's, there's a few stories going around. <laughs> um, I think they knew that the contract was running out, and, and they just, so did the P3 okay. organization, Nova Learning, want to get involved in such a costly venture, um, venture with a year left to go kind of thing. Yep. Um, and I think that's it. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. I didn't... Yeah. I figured that was the answer. Yeah. Um, and refresh my memory, maybe, Madam CAO, did this organization put an application in through our grants process? We have that on? Yep, we do. Yep. So we have an application on file, and I think at the time we just wanted to hear, hear from the group right. and then kind of move forward from there. While I have the floor, Mr. Chair, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so because there's a huge accessibility component um, to the work you're doing, um, what I can do is um, have Mark w work with you a little bit on some of the costs for the design work and whatnot. There's probably some funding dollars to help offset those design costs. And then that will also put you kind of in the queue for hopefully grants for the construction phase as well on the accessibility side of things. We've been working with the accessibility directorate quite a bit. So we've got some relationships developed. So Thanks. in addition yeah. to everything else we're going to try to do to help you, we can do that too. That's Perfect. fantastic. I love Thanks. it. Thanks. And I, I was going to ask as well if, if there's anything we could do. I'm the chair of the Accessibility Advisory Committee for, um, for Modi. So, you know, if there is anything, sometimes we look at the big picture of 3,000 and yeah, that large number there, mm -hmm. and right? And so if there are ways that we can help you find the, you know, the funding through, well, this might not fit this criteria, right. but that particular part might fit that criteria. So it's great to know that Mark will be able to help them with that. So yeah, look forward. Thank Perfect. you. Good Thank luck. Councillor Durkee. Thanks. I'll be quick. I, you just answered one of the questions that, that I had, but the other suggestion was jump start through Canadian Tire might be another um, source for funding. Yes. 
I don't see anyone else's microphones going. Uh, I do have a couple quick questions. Uh, in regards to the school advisory committee, is, is one of those going on in the school? Yes. And, and they, are they also working yes. diligently towards this, uh, Schools Plus? Uh, yes, we have Schools Plus. We, we do have Schools Plus representation on our committee. Okay. Uh, one last thing, you might have noticed me playing with my phone and I wasn't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> goofing off or not paying attention. No Actually, I had scanned the uh, the QR code that's on the brochure that you gave us, yeah. and it does say it does come up. It says no longer available for purchase. So, <laughs> let me explain. Um, I'm sorry that that happened, and during the summer months, the um, Tri County School Board shut down online donations, and we were told that that would resume when school reopened and we've been asking and we've been told that I'm working on it, I'm working on it. So it will come back up again. But I will warn you, if you make an online donation, there is a processing fee added on, which I disagree with and I've argued it and there's nothing I can do. So if you wanna make a donation in another form, as in a drop off at the school, it will cost you a little less. <laughs> Do you follow me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I was just I'm not a fan of processing fees. <laughs> I, I, I was actually curious about that because that was going to be my follow-up question that I said if you use the, the QR code, is there a processing mm -hmm. fee? So, yes. Yes. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it affected one family. She made, the family made a That's substantial a donation, but then had to put it in multiple times to get the amount she wanted, and which I think ended up being several hundred dollars. Yes. Really? Yeah. The donation was yeah. 2,500 and she ended up paying 28 yeah. something. Almost $400 in processing fees. Yeah. yeah. Because each one had to be done separately. There was like a maximum, I think. Amount that you could donate yeah. at once. Yes. Okay, someone wants to drop off a donation at the school. How do they go about that? What, do they write anything specific on the envelope? Uh, pass it to the secretary? Yeah. Heidi DeMille? She's your go-to. All right. Heidi DeMille, she's at the front office, ring the doorbell if the door is locked, and she She'll will come visit. Yes. <laughs> and if you write playground donation on there, we'll get it. <laughs> All right, well, on behalf of council and residents municipality, thank you very much for the project that you're undertaking, because I know it's a huge, tra a t huge task, and I do know that you have uh, one good person, uh, Linda Gallagher, who, yes. who worked very hard on the Splash Park, and yes. that she uh, certainly knows what she's doing, so behalf of council thank you very much thank you for your thank presentation you. thank you thank you uh, sorry sorry for being so late we were tied up in a in another meeting so that's, that's okay. okay we don't have any students waiting on us now <laughs> <laughs> unaccompanied minors <laughs> mine is currently at after school program saying mommy why is one of the later <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, moving on, item 7.2. Our next presentation is by our deputy CAO, Darlene LeBlanc. You all have a, a presentation that she had written up uh, for September 8th of 2022. Darlene, if I may ask that you hit the red button, I'll turn on your microphone and I'll hand the floor over to you. All right, thanks. Um, so yeah, you've got that in front of you. Um, I'll just go through some of the things that are going on. Oh. Fair? Better? I'll go through some of the things that are going on in uh, my world right now. Um, so in the past year, we've completed eight full-time permanent hiring processes, um, as well as approximately 20 or so uh, summer positions, and that's between Recreation, Public Works, and Cape Fourchu. Um, and just to give you an idea of the process involved with the hiring um, for permanent positions, we usually, we get, on average, lately we've been getting at least 40 applications for positions that we advertise. And um, I do an initial short list uh, to sort of weed out people who don't have any um, relevant experience or education. And then I uh, get together with the hiring committee. We do another short listing to determine who's going to get an interview. Then we do a first round of interviews and we do five, about five cap, um, applicants. From that, we determine um, who we want to get in for a second round of interviews. We usually do a couple of interviews that way and the CAO joins us on that. And then um, there's usually some kind of competency test 
and then there's reference checks, and then there's a probationary period when we do hire someone. So it's quite a, quite a process that we go through with each of these hiring. Um, we're starting to plan a mental health training for the fall, which is through the Mental Health Commission of Canada. That'll be for staff. Um, an this year we developed an orientation for summer staff on violence in the workplace. And um, through that, we looked at the policy itself, uh, the definition of violence and our commitment to preventing it, and um, what to do if you experience or witness any form of violence um, in the workplace. Bylaws and policies, we have a number that, we're, that are underway right now. Uh, most are ones that are being reviewed. The only new one is the Parkland dedication one, but uh, streets and sidewalks bylaw is going forward today. Uh, dog bylaw, we're just doing a general review and updating, and we're going to be sending it to the SBCA for review just to make sure that there's nothing that conflicts with our contract with them. Um, parkland dedication will be a policy statement on how to determine where and how those funds will be used. The transient vendor bylaw is just a general review uh, and update that's needed there. All of these will come to council as well for discussion. Uh, the CDDI bylaw, we're looking at how to possibly add South, South Ohio to that list. Procurement policy, reviewing the section on local preference. The flag policy, we're looking at adding a couple of holidays or events to the list that we now have on there. Um, and our citizen representative policy, we're looking at reviewing, reviewing it to account for appointing citizens to separate legal entities who might have their own terms um, governing the um, the term, their own bylaws governing the terms of appointment. So, for example, our policy states that a term is for two years, but we might have another committee that has a term of four years, and we want to make sure that it accounts for that. There isn't a conflict there. We, the accessibility audits for the buildings uh, have been completed, and we're now waiting for the reports. They did th this building as well as the Rotary Center. Um, the training for council and staff was completed. Uh, the accessibility plan, there's a three-year plan that council approved right now, and a lot of things in that plan um, are going to take a lot of work and time and, and a lot of money. Um, but there's a number of things in there that we can start doing now, and so we're working on that kind of action plan to bring forward to the, to the committee. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're looking at, or we're working on developing a matrix for establishing the advisory committee and for recruiting employees, and that will look at the different kind of skills and experience that we want to have um, included on the committee. Um, we'll try to get some community feedback on that, and it'll come to council for discussion before anything moves forward. We're also currently reviewing, starting to review other examples of plans and strategies from other, other municipal units. In health and safety, we are looking at working on, or we're working on developing a safety plan for public meetings, um, as well as working on uh, pro procedures for lockdown uh, for emergency situations. And in IT, a couple of things we're doing is we're looking at, uh, we're working on putting security measures in place for social media accounts and for, and for email. And for example, with Facebook, one of the concerns is uh, if someone um, you know, hacks into somebody's personal account and then they might get access to one of the Modi pages or, or groups. So we're looking at how to address that. We'll have um, one sort of super admin person, which will probably be Mike. Um, and then that person will then allow editors to be able to participate in those pages. And I think Mike is just about done doing the two-factor authentication for email as well. And then we have the new software program, program migration, which is going to be a huge piece of work for our IT department of one. Um, so that's, on, that's ongoing. Um, so that's just kind of a general overview of what's going on. Um, do you have any questions? Any questions of councillors? Deputy Warden, you have the floor, I think. Nope, no. Nope. Councillor Herbert. Councillor Herbert. <laughs> I was quick to the draw. <laughs> well, I see this hand moving in, I assume. We all know what assuming does. Councillor Herbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Darlene, very much. Um, it's interesting when you have, you know, when we talk about the flag policy, and less than a year ago we had a flag policy that was very limiting, so it's exciting to see that we're actually looking at adding more dates and events to that list, so 
thank you for working on that and then bringing it back to us. And we did speak earlier this week about the Accessibility um, Advisory Committee and just kind of how we're going to move forward through that. So thank you for the work on that. And do we have a rough estimate of when we may have the matrix for the diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff ready to come to us? Are we talking weeks, months? Uh, probably, it's hard to say, but probably by next month, I would think we could okay. have something. I mean, yeah. the staff needs to review it first. And okay, no, that's fine. And you talk about our department, our IT department of one. So refresh my memory maybe through you or to the CAO. So we've purchased Town Suite. And have we started working through any of that, or are we still in the beginning stages of that? Uh, Deputy Warren, can you turn off your microphone just for a second so I can turn on? Jenny, you have the floor because you can answer the question. Now, Deputy Warren, you can flash your mic back on if you wish to. Sure. So uh, we have started. Okay. Uh, we're in the very early stages. We haven't actually started implementing the software system we're still working through the initial stages of data looking at data okay but we're getting very close to starting transferring data over into town suite and how do how long do you do the staff think that this is going to take the whole project yeah, the whole project i would say at least 18 months okay yeah perfect thank you and thank you darlene 18 months wow Slow internet connection speed? <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Warden, I'm sorry. Just the kind of mood I'm in today. Deputy Warden, you have the floor. Thank you for your report. It's excellent. And um, just the parkland dedication, uh, what, what's the timeline on, on that? We're hoping to have something come forward in October. In October. OK, yeah. perfect. Thanks. Looking forward to it. Be great. Any more questions, comments? Seeing none, thank you very much, Darlene, for your report. And uh, obviously, I see you just about every day that I'm in here, so keep at it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item number eight, correspondence for action, 8.1 and 8.1.1, notification letter, proposed land-based marine plant applicable application in Lower West Pubnico. You all have that in your package. What is the wishes of Deputy Ward? <laughs> My apologies Fast once again, sharing. Councillor Herbert. <laughs> you have the floor. Um, I have a question because this is under action, and I'm just unclear as to what our action, what we are actioning on this. Because when I look, read it, I see it as an FYI. Is, can someone explain? what we should be, like what's the action item here? So there's not necessarily an action item, okay. but there is an invitation for the District of Yarmouth to provide feedback, and so that would be a decision of council whether or not we do that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Deputy Ward. Clearly, Council Herbert has an, has a, a, an opportunity to very well at Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably less so skilled on the, on the buzzer. Um, in any event, um, I, I think there is an action here. Um, I would agree with Councillor Herbert that, that pro probably there's, there's, there's it's, it's nice, it's an FYI, but I think we should write uh, the department back and thank them for uh, letting us know about these projects in the area because uh, it's important for us to know and, and uh, you know, something to the effect that we, we appreciate the increased um, communication or transparency or something like that, but perhaps staff could put uh, pen to paper and come up with a, a response of uh, of that that type. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we forward that uh, to to council for um, for approval of the the, uh, the writing of a letter back to uh, Fisheries and Aquaculture just to thank them for the the uh, the information and that it's appreciated uh, the change in protocol. All right, so there's a motion on the floor. Do I have a seconder on that motion? Seconded by Councillor Nick Helton. Any discussion? Uh, I will have one thing to say before I call for the question. Uh, I think you're absolutely right that uh, we should write the, the department a letter uh, thanking them for their thing, but uh, I also believe in that letter that since it's happening in another, another municipal district uh, on this file, we, we have no concerns. 
or no input. That would be my only wish that we'd see in the letter. Any other discussion on the motion on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. <coughs> Item 8.1.2, the annual 9-11 Fallen Firefighters Memorial Service. This arrived in your package this morning and we did not receive any correspondence from the from the town of Yarmouth Fire Department regarding this. However, as a volunteer firefighter, I do get uh, text messages uh, every day. And one of the text messages that I get is, uh, that I've gotten over the past two weeks is this, this uh, text, and I'm gonna read it out to you. I know I'm not playing with my phone once again, but it says, the Yarmouth Fire Department will be holding their annual 9-11 fire, Fallen Firefighters Memorial service September 11th at 10 a.m. Please be at the hall at 9.30 if attending. Now, what I did this morning, once again, I got this text again, and then I, I was going over our agenda again, and I noticed that it was not in, in our agenda. And, I, and then what I did is I sent this email off to the CAO inquiring to the Yarmouth Fire Department if it is uh, open or if we've received any correspondence on this. So I'm gonna turn the floor over to the CAO to, uh... Yeah, so we hadn't received any correspondence on it, and I'm, I don't know that we've ever received an invitation um, for this event, it, and it looks like it's annual. So long story short, we did reach out to the chief. The chief absolutely indicated that it is a public event and, and the elected officials are encouraged, encouraged to attend. So we were just hoping to have, the, you know, a little email or whatever, so you would have documentation in writing, but um, I think you've got, you've got it. It's September 11th um, at at 10.30, Mr. Chair? September the 11th at 10 a.m. 10, so, yep. And they want everyone at the hall at 9.30. Uh, just, to, just to let everyone know, I was going there, I was going to go there representing the, uh, the Carlton Fire Department. I do believe I'm the only one, so I'd certainly appreciate if someone could attend Sunday on behalf of the municipality, because uh, I, I don't really want to carry two roles going in. So if someone is going, but I can uh, go as the warden. But I just wanted to let everyone know, so make this available to you. Uh, it's open to all of you, so please uh, let me know if, if one of you are attending. That's the reason why it's for an action here. All right. Item 8.2, for information, you have the letter from the Honorable Susan Corkum Greek regarding cellular service. I caught you this time. Councillor Herbert, you have the floor. I, um, just thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I appreciate the correspondence back from the Minister of Economic Development. And, you know, we around this council table know how important cell service is to our residents and it is part of our business plan. So just, you know, as a note for me and a note for the rest of us, just to make sure this doesn't fall, you know, continue to fall off our radar, we, you know, keep it in as forefront as we as we can along with all the other work that we're doing thank you absolutely thank you very much for that moving on item number nine old business request for decision in regards to j-class road construction sharing nomination madam ceo Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, Abid is with us too, just in case there's any other questions. In your um, meeting package today, you had the material for the annual um, partnership program that we do with the province around improving uh, J-Class roads. So those are the roads that fall under our cost-sharing agreement with the province, whereby the roads are owned by the province, but um, we support some of the work by making financial contributions to the maintenance. There's a capital program assigned or attached to those roads whereby all municipalities who have that cost sharing agreement can nominate roads for improvements. So improve the gravel, improve the subsurface, upgrade it to paved. Um, and so every municipality who wishes, who's, who has one of those cost sharing agreements can nominate projects. The province looks at the entire field of nominated projects and they determine um, within their kind of own priority ranking process which, uh, which projects they'd like to take a look at they develop an order of magnitude cost. They reach back out to those municipalities who have uh, nominated projects which were selected. 
Um, that usually comes back around January. And then council has the prerogative to determine inside its capital investment plan whether or not it wants to move forward. It's 50-50 cost sharing. And um, we had nominated um, uh, Goodwin and L L Lilac, and uh, they were done in 2021. So we've recommended um, this year uh, that council nominate Hillside Drive, um, upgrade uh, from half paved, half gravel to all paved, Hector Street um, out from Trunk One in Port Maitland, um, repave it, the paving is failing, and Churchill Street uh, from Trunk One in Dayton, it's half paved, half gravel, so we would want to upgrade that to paved. And then included are just the appendices that um, provide the entire picture around the program and the maps um, that were developed by Abed and the Director of Public Works when they did their condition assessments and made their recommendations. Thank you very much for that. Deputy Warden Trevor Cunningham, you have the floor. All right, this is a great uh, um, opportunity to cost share these, and um, um, they're all in need of, of, of repair, obviously, and uh, it's nice that the Department of Public Works is, uh, Provincial Department of Public Works is able to work with us, and hopefully we'll be able to get these done, uh, you know, in, in, in the next paving season or as soon as possible. Uh, so having said that, I'll, uh, I'll move that we accept the recommendation is circulated and, uh, and in the order of, uh, and nominate those three projects in the order presented um, and uh, move it forward to, uh, to our regularly scheduled council meeting for final approval. Your motion on the floor, do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Patty Durkee. I thought I seen Councillor Hurlbert's hand go up, but I wasn't <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is my right eye is my lazy eye, so I, got, I have another excuse. I'm not going to complain about the screens no more. Now I'm going to complain about my lazy eye. Is there any discussion on that motion? Councillor Nick Hilton, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just for better understanding, I'm not sure who I'm asking. Is this an exhaustive list of all the roads? And like, because at one point we'd ask for that. Is this all the roads in, that we're responsible for? Yeah, I, in the appendices, um, they're all of the roads. So Appendix B has the list of all the roads that could qualify. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at. Yep, okay, um, good. Um, and, you know, there's different letters involved. Are we only responsible for J? Only J. Uh, no, Any, anything on that list is part of our cost-sharing agreement. We just refer to it as J class roads for ease because it's J, K, L, and it goes on and on. But the on and on but the G H and I as well yep anything on that list is part of the cost sharing agreement um, the the letter assigned to it, it actually that's a great question Councillor Hilton the letters that are assigned reflect the level of service that the province is assigning to that road so the roads that have a J on that list would be your highest level of service roads in the entire field package of roads and then as you go down through the alphabet those roads would generally be assigned a lower level of service. So they may be in really great condition right now, but as they deteriorate or get older, they may not receive the same treatment that a road with a higher alphabetical ranking might receive. Okay, thank you very much. And one more question, like, is it me or is the Peth Road not on here? Is that, I thought that was, <coughs> I'm asking for Councillor Allen, because he would have asked. Is the Peth, was the Peth Road not one of these roads? One of our roads? Um, we, I would have to confirm if there's an error in the list or not. I can't answer that question right now. Yeah, I'd like to know if it was kind of reviewed by a bid also. I, I'm assuming you... you Which one is that? The Peth Road? Path. Path. P-E-T-H. It's an arc. Okay. If we could check on that before council, yeah, that would be great. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Hilton, you done? Yes, thank you. Councillor Sherry Hurlbert, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to CAO or a bid, um, there is a large list of J's, and I'm, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how staff gets to a list of three out of many, and can we add more than three, or is three the maximum historically? Uh, um, so I think what we want to do is we, when we make a submission to the province, um, we want to signify that 
it's important that these roads are done. If we submit too many roads, mm -hmm. um, the province may look at look at that list and because keep in mind we're being evaluated against other municipal right. submissions. Okay. Um, they may look at it and say, not sure that this municipality really knows what their priorities are right now. And so, you know, I'm not saying that that would happen, but I think you want to go in with a, a strong indication of what needs to be done for your residents. So um, since I've been here, we've nominated three roads per round. Okay. Yeah. And follow up to that, just because we have, there is a large list, and I guess my concern is, not that I, not that I think we need three, more than three, but for our residents who may come back to us and say, well, how come my road wasn't on this list or how come it wasn't considered? Mm -hmm. So I, I just am wondering, is there a way for us to know what kind of criteria got these three to the top of the list as opposed to the others? So Abid can jump in there, but I, I think largely what we've done is we've mirrored our process for our active transportation projects. Okay. So we look at schools, we look at community um, hubs, we look at density, we look at traffic, and so I can just let Abid finish. Right, uh, uh, Victoria. Um, we toured all the roads which were on the list. Uh, we saw the condition. Uh, we saw how many people are living on the uh, are they, uh, is this road serving a school or any, you know, community uh, infrastructure? So based on that, we narrowed down the three worst roads. So these were the three worst roads and it, uh, we can add more depending upon councils because it's a 50-50 share. And, um, and that's that's all I can say. Okay. No, that's fine. I just yeah. I don't think that we need to add more. I was just trying to get some context for me and for our residents who may be watching or ask us in the future why their road didn't make the list. And so your clarification on you know schools and number of people and traffic and all of that I yeah. think you know satisfies satisfies me. So so thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do have one quick question in this regard. Is this a list of all the J class roads in the municipality? All the cost share roads. They may not necessarily be J, all the J-class roads, but they're all the roads that are in our cost-sharing agreement, which would be the only roads that would qualify for this capital program. And the reason why I ask that is because I think I knew where Councillor Herlebert may be going with this. Uh, th there may be comments about, well, you guys picked these three roads. Well, what about my road? Well, your road may not necessarily be on the on the list. So, so that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So. For sure. This this here list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print off a list of this for my own personal reflection when I'm asked this question. They say, "Well, I live on this the so and so road. Is it on the list?" And I can say that that is or is not on the cost sharing agreement that the municipality district of Yarmouth has with the province to repair. That that's where I'm going with this. I don't know if that's where Councillor Herbert was going, but that's where I went. Okay, is there any more discussion on the motion on the floor? Question being called on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Abid. I don't know. Item number 10, 10.1, Municipal Streets and Sidewalks by Law, S-089-22. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So in your package, you will find a couple of documents um, that we're going to talk about in sequence. And the first is um, a bylaw, which was called Streets and Sidewalks Bylaw, and we're showing highlighted in yellow the areas where we're recommending changes to your bylaw. Um, so the work around streets and sidewalks, the bylaw piece and the policy piece, is coming from confusion for users of those two documents about a bylaw and a policy that were sort of talking about the same thing. Um, some pieces had operational elements in them and not governance elements in them. So we're seeking to uh, simplify your governance structure here and to provide some clarity and to do some updating. So Darlene has worked with um, the Director of Public Works and the Director of Municipal Services um, on this project as well as myself. So. I'll run through the changes and Darlene is here, so hopefully between the two of us we can support your conversation. 
Um, so we've just updated the purpose section uh, to more accurately reflect what the bylaw is meant to do. And, and again, that's to provide the guidelines um, regarding the activities and conditions affecting municipal streets, sidewalks, and other property owned by the municipality. So to make it clear that um, your authority only extends to the assets that you own and govern. We've added a couple of definitions um, for the CAO and the Director of Public Works. Um, moving on, um, we just clarified under the definition of a sidewalk, um, just, just to make it um, more readable. And under street, we provided clarity in terms of for the purposes of this bylaw. So in some sections, we will use the word street. And we will be referring to a linear asset that could be a municipal street. It could be a highway, a road, a lane, a sidewalk, a thoroughfare, a bridge, a square, just, just for clarity. Um, so that's kind of housekeeping administrative part of the bylaw. In part three, under removal of ice and snow from sidewalks, um, in 3.1, uh, we've drilled down um, to clarify that we're, we're really looking to address uh, safety hazards or threats. So in 3.1, um, we're talking about uh, snow, icicles, or ice overhanging um, an abutting sidewalk, which is a safety hazard. The, the owner of that property or the um, occupant of that property has to remove such snow, icicles, or ice before it falls or is likely to fall on a sidewalk. So think of a, a structure that's really close to the sidewalk, and maybe there's snow or icicles hanging off the roof, and it could fall down into the sidewalk. We're saying that you know the owner or the occupant of that property is responsible to remove that safety hazard from the sidewalk. And then down also in section three and 3.5, we really wanted to provide clarity around the snow removal activity. So residents can uh, get frustrated from time to time when they do snow clearing in their driveways and then public snow clearing happens. And so we just needed to provide clarity in the bylaw that if a property owner or occupant clears a driveway and uh, we come by and we do our snow clearing activity, we're not responsible to clear um, the snow from their driveway. They're responsible to clear that. And then um, we did some housekeeping to do better alignment amongst the sections um, with respect to part eight, which is the street disturbance piece. And um, so that was just basically an alignment. If you keep moving through the document, there's a significant change in section 8.4. So when we do grant a street disturbance permit, if the street is going to be, the street surface is going to be broken, uh, we can require a deposit. And we, um, in our old version of the bylaw, we were holding the deposit for six months. And really, um, we don't know for sure how that project would settle once it's reinstated for a whole year. We have to go through all the seasons and see if um, the street would, will maintain um, its quality and its integrity through, through a whole calendar year. So we're recommending we move um, holding that deposit from six months to 12 months. <coughs> Excuse me. And we are also uh, cleaning up, based on the advice of the solicitor, we're cleaning up uh, the recourse for the municipality when um, it has to go in and remediate uh, substandard work, um, our, our ability to post that as a first lien or go seek a judgment in court. Um, and we've also in 8.7.2, we've updated the reference document um, with respect to standards. So we've said the latest edition of the Nova Scotia Temporary Workplace Traffic Control. And I think uh, that is, um, in a nutshell, what we're recommending for uh, amendments for discussion here today. Any questions, comments, concerns? Councillor Paddy Durkee, you have the floor. I'll make a motion that we refer this to regular council for uh, approval of uh, the amendments to streets and sidewalks bylaw S-089-22. Now, does this have to go through a number of readings uh, because it's a bylaw? Uh, can I get a seconder before you uh, just hold? <laughs> oh, you still sorry. have the floor. Uh, seconded by Deputy Warden Trevor Cunningham. And Councillor Durkee, you still have the floor, so repeat. go ahead. Does this not have to go through first and second reading? Or That's right, okay. but no public hearing, Councillor. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, Councillor Nick Hilton, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This question is for the CAO, I guess. Um, the um, 
transportation trail that goes through Rockville is not governed by this policy at all? Is there a policy that governs whatever that, whatever happened down there? Yep, so that's right. So the trails aren't included. So we would look at that trail. Um, so first of all, we don't, we don't provide snow removal on, on that because it's an active transportation trail. It's not a sidewalk. So it's in a bit of a different category. Um, with respect to all other aspects of asset management though, we would treat it the same as sidewalks in terms of condition assessments and nominating capital improvement projects in, in, and so forth to council. Okay, thank you. Any more discussion on the motion on the floor? Question, Question being called on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried unanimously. Item 10.2, streets and sidewalks policies and procedures, S-088-12, repeal. Mr. Chair, given um, the proposed amendments to the bylaw and the confusion for users of the tools, um, we're recommending that we repeal this document. Um, the governance aspects of this document have been included in the amendments to the bylaw, and then we're developing standard operating procedures internally for the administrative aspects of this. What is the wishes of council? Deputy Warden Trevor Cunningham, you have the floor. I'll move that uh, council forward uh, the streets and sidewalk policy and procedure S-088-12 to regular council for repeal. Okay, a motion on the floor. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Patty Durkee. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question being called. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Item 10.3, thank you letter. Re the TMAC, Councillor Durkee, you have the floor. And, and I can't take credit for this because it was actually a suggestion coming from our CAO, but I was in uh, <clears throat> entire agreement. Um, I'd like to uh, make a recommendation that we send a letter to um, the Yarmouth and Acadian Shores Tourism Organization for the outstanding job that they did organizing the um, Travel Media of, uh, of Canada uh, Association um, conference which was held in Yarmouth and was extremely successful and I can just tell you that the number of articles that are coming out in support of our um, region um, are limitless it's been amazing uh, it's nothing but positive and so we're really appreciative of all the work that was done to um, on this conference so I'd like to make that a motion please Okay, motion on the floor to have a seconder, seconded by Councillor Lauren Cushing. Is there any discussion? Uh, I will say this much. I attended that conference on the Cat Ferry, and I met people from all across Canada, everywhere from the Northwest Territories to BC to Newfoundland, all over. And they all had an absolute blast. All of them did. And it was, it was my pleasure being there to uh, greet a lot of them. Councillor Durkee, you still have the floor. I'm yes, sorry. Thank I, I butted in on thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do want to add that, um, that interestingly enough, there is uh, a couple from Vancouver who I met on uh, the CAT who have actually purchased a home in Port Maitland, and uh, they'll be moving there in the next week or so. They loved it. <laughs> and so they, they're moving here. Young couple. Pretty awesome. <laughs> Absolutely, that's that's awesome. Absolutely, that just goes to show that the type of class events that that Yesta held there, it was fantastic. I I had a ball. The food was fantastic. They got spoiled with the food, as far as I'm concerned. But no, they they put on things. So any more discussion on the motion on the floor? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Motion carried unanimously. Item 10.4, request for decision regarding the County Crescent Paving Contract Award. Madam CAO. So this will be a joint effort between myself and the Director of Municipal Services. Um, 
in the capital investment plan, uh, we've made a significant allotment for improvements in the Hebron Business Park to facilitate the um, economic development and commercial development happening there. And one of the pieces um, is an extension on County Crescent. And so a bid has done the work necessary to receive the prices for that. And he has submitted um, a request for decision to council around that. Don't know a bid if there's anything specific you want to share with council or just entertain questions. Yeah, okay. questions if there are any. I will say that the bid price um, has come in uh, at, at the budget forecast for it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that sort of blew me away when you said that. <laughs> Councillor Nick Hilton, you have the floor. That was, that was my question, actually, and if, if that's the case, I will make that a motion. Um, is it too early to make a motion to accept that? No. So uh, that council approved the awarding of the County Crescent Extension contract to Aberdeen Paving Limited for the amount of 297 dollars plus HST. A motion on the floor to have a seconder, seconded by Councillor Lauren Cushing. Uh, that was a recommendation to move this to regular council. Sure. Let's go with that. Just, just being clear. You sure they don't want to pave that this week? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Councillor Sherry Hurlbert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, um, Abid, for doing this work and uh, staff as well. Question about process. If we refer this to regular, I know that it says here in status that could potentially be completed by the end of this year. If we wait to have this approved at regular council, does that delay us in starting that? Could we maybe think about calling? A no, we'll it's, we'll. it's fine to leave it with that, that timeline? Yeah, we'll let okay. Aberdeen know that the recommendation is being made and okay. they can, I mean, it's just a couple of weeks and they have lots of make ready work to do. So okay. yeah. Perfect, thank you. No. And I'm going to say it again. Really? <laughs> Under budget? <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, paid I'll, our comeuppance on other projects. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that because uh, unfortunately with, with the world economy lately that, that nothing seems to be stable and, and it's, this is a, a pleasant surprise to be, to be very honest. Any more discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried unanimously. Item number 11, in camera, I need a motion to go into camera. Moved by Councillor Nick Hilton, seconded by Councillor Lauren Cushing to go into camera. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried unanimously.